Michigan Replay. With Bo Schembechler. And Jim Brandstetter. Brought to you in part by the General Motors Corporation. Much more pleasant show this the second week of the regular season as Michigan defeats Washington State 44 to 18. And you're a little to admit. Jim, I like this show a lot better <laughs> when we win and when we only have one turnover. That was the key to the game, as any game. You didn't turn it over seven times, you only turned it over once. And much better. Well, we were I think three of the four quarters we were still spotty. But the third period, uh, we look like a good Michigan team, and uh, so we can build on that. You worked the team very hard the week during practice, including a padded practice on Monday. Right. That had something to do with it, don't you think? Well, I think the emphasis on, uh, you know, eliminating mistakes and that we're not the ball club that we ought to be. Um, and we had good effort in practice. And I think uh, the one thing about it was that... Uh, wanted to prove that they had the same stuff as previous teams, that they were not a losing ball club, and, and consequently, I thought they played a lot better. And the offense looked much more confident in this game. I think they did. Um, this is our opening drive, and we trap up the middle with Phil Webb, the fullback, uh, picking up a first down. Uh, yeah, I thought we had uh, a little bit more. This, we put a formation on the sideline here and had an excellent... Uh, run-to-run -run check on them and whether we went to the sideline or the field that was the first time it worked but we worked that uh, check goal uh, four or five times in the game very effectively with Jamie Moore. And here's your first big break. Right we got a break here and they fumbled the ball Phil Webb recovered for us and uh, we got good field position. They decided since they on them they'd come out And uh, Demetrius put it on the money, and we take a seven to nothing lead. And that's a good first pass or second pass for Demetrius Brown to throw. Gives right. his confidence a lift. Sure did. Now, as you know, this is uh, this passing attack with uh, one back or no backs is uh, very tough. There they hit the tight end quickly. Goes back again, hit the in route here with the wide receiver for a big play. This drive, Jim, was 19 plays included in the drive were two holding penalties and an offside. Finally, on a misalignment by us, they hit the tight end for a touchdown, and uh, they get right back in the game. And I want you to know that was discouraging. 95 yards in 19 plays, three penalties, and they still scored. And then you almost get it right back. Well, then we come back and run a draw play with uh, Demetrius, and he fumbles the ball for our only turnover, which gives them field position once again. This time, the defense held and they kicked a field goal to go ahead 10 to 7. Now, at this point, you've got to be feeling, oh, wait a minute, this can't be repeated as last week. Well, let's put it this way, Jim. <laughs> at this point in the game, I'm not feeling real good, no, uh, because we got the first score, and then we end up right back. They have the ball at midfield here again. Uh, this is a great interception by Sue Campbell, uh, which uh, stopped the drive and gives us the ball back. And here on a third down and five, uh, Demetrius goes back. And once again, Johnny Colasar beat the 41. Oh, they juggled it and the score. You had good in defense, though. That's the kind of thing that happened. That's what happened. That's exactly right. Third down and eight. We failed to get a lineman to come out to block the blitz on the backside, Jim, which happens occasionally. Demetrius gets sacked. Fortunately, he did not drop the ball. And we settled for a field goal to tie the score at 10 all. The second period. While they gamble and sometimes lose, that time they gambled and got the sack, although your guard didn't get out the block. That's right. Uh, you still get the ball back and are able to make some fakes, and uh, uh, Demetrius hits uh, McMurphy over the middle for a big play. We have the ball at the 30 again. Once again, we're stalled, which isn't good. That's why I wasn't particularly happy with the offense in the first half. We had too many times we had field position, had to settle for field goal attempt. One of the things we talked about before when I've asked at halftime, the issue was very much in doubt. I felt even more so in this game only because the offense really hadn't controlled the line of scrimmage. And you said before, we were moving the ball, so I felt confident. Wasn't that way for this game? I wouldn't argue with you a bit. I would not say that that game was anywhere near under control at halftime, in spite of the fact we had a three-point lead. Um, but we, we knew we were going to get the ball to start the second half. Whereas against Notre Dame, when we were trailing 
uh, 10 to nothing, uh, we had to kick to them. And they moved the ball and got field position right away on us again. At least this time with a three-point lead, we were going to get the second half kickoff. And uh, Michigan, of course, made the most of it. And we'll be back and take a look at those second half highlights when Michigan replay continues. Frustrating in the first half, you know, uh, two-step drop back, you know, you get free and you get there and you get the ball off. But we came back uh, in the second half and we knew we just kept putting a lot of pressure on them that eventually, uh, you know, their pass protection would break down and somebody would get home. The key to the whole game was uh, keeping pressure on the quarterback and making a move with speed and uh, we knew our secondary was getting covered. And that was the way we were going in the game and I think we did, we did a pretty good job by getting it done. This week is a rough week. It's probably one of the best week I heard since I've been here in Michigan. Uh, we put the pass on every day and and uh, we came out today, we're ready to go. And hopefully uh, we keep it up all the way through the year. We didn't have to think about last week because it happened. Last week I just couldn't relax and just didn't concentrate like I was supposed to. And uh, today I just you know, concentrated on what I had to do, get the team into the right play, you know, and just read my keys and stuff like that. Demetrius Brown certainly got it done against Washington State. Coach Schoenbecker, he told me after the game that you didn't baby him. You weren't going to baby him uh, <laughs> about his performance after Notre Dame. Well, it would be hard for me to say that he played well, and uh, so you might as well tell him the truth. But um, I think the important thing was that we uh, decided that we weren't going to make any changes, and, uh, and that's the important thing. Once we declared that our quarterback situation has not changed, then I think he knew we had the confidence in it. And the offense started the second half great. What adjustments did you make? Well, uh, we made several in that because we got some new alignments in the, uh, that were different than what we anticipated. So we had to change a few blocking adjustments, but other than that, we just had, uh, here's that same um, play again with Jamie breaking wide again, bouncing up right outside. And that got us good yardage. That was, uh, that was an extremely important. We decided to go back to that in the second half. Here's a third down nine, and um, go over the middle. He overthrows John, but he was hit in the back by that uh, defender. So consequently, he got a, a, a pass interference call. Took the ball down in there. Jamie goes in uh, for the score, and uh, we take a 20 to 10 lead. You got a lot of help from referees in this game. A couple holding calls during the first half, and then this interference call. Jim, against this team, you could call holding every down, <laughs> and you wouldn't be out of order. Uh, the, the one thing about it, you got back there one or two yards. The only way you're going to keep them out is to hold them. And uh, they were fortunate they didn't get more of them called, really. Had to settle for a field goal here and uh, and got it to take a 23 to 10 uh, lead here in the third period. And he just owns the third period. And here's the big play that really gets it back. Right. He throws over the middle. J.J. Graham intercepts. Uh, we've got great field position again with a 13-point uh, lead. And uh, that interception really stroked it back. Uh, and it was the defense making the big play, which they hadn't done in the previous game. Well, it's one of those pass offenses where it takes a little while for you to, you know, get accustomed to it. It was an option play. Uh, you can't see it very well from the ground level. <laughs> but uh, Demetrius Brown kept the ball and ran in for a touchdown, and that made it 30 to 10. Coming back now, Demetrius again goes to the air. This is a great catch by John Colasai. Remember those post cuts coming in over the middle? They started to defend us. They'd take the post cut and went back to the corner and was wide open. Counter play, I thought this was Jamie's best run of the day. Found the crease, cut up over the middle, did a great job on it. Third down and goal here. Jamie finds a little crease up the middle and goes for the touchdown. And this is all third quarter action, and you've just blown them away. And uh, I think that really told the tone of the game, yet they weren't done. Well, when you're, when you're passing team like they are, you know, they're really in a catch-up offense uh, every down. And so it really doesn't bother them too much when they get behind because they go right back in and start throwing again. It's an illegal play. Um, so that's the newest man to yard over the line of scrimmage when he throws a touchdown pass, but our officials did not see it. And, uh, but that's one of those things. Well, here's a little look at the future, maybe. Uh, this is Alan Jefferson uh, breaking the tackle here. Uh, I told him before the game that if they're going to play up that tight. If they miss a tackle on the run, or like we hit the post cuts or the deep passes on them, uh, they're going to get hurt. Now, they give us some bad plays, but Jefferson broke a tackle once he broke a tackle. 
Uh, no one that I know of is going to catch him <laughs> here this fast going back. Uh, you beat Washington State 44-18. Where are you? I know that you said you played, played spotty for three quarters. The only really other third quarter that you were happy with. Well, that's true. And, and, uh, but our problem is a simple one that, that hits uh, quite a few teams. Uh, we may have lost uh, Mike Peter and Steve Seibert in this game. Um, but compounds our problem because our major injuries have all been on defense. From the beginning of the year with Brent White and uh, Mark Spencer and Curtis Feaster and, and now two more. I, you know, uh, we can only absorb so much of that and uh, it's going to really hurt our defense. Now, most of our injuries have been on that side of the ball. Uh, that's unfortunate because they need all the people healthy to do it. To lose a player like uh, Peter and uh, a player like Cybert, um, that's more than we can really take. Defensively, that obviously puts you in a hole uh, because of those injuries are big losses. But offensively, uh, I'm sure you're going to be more pleased with, obviously, the performance against Washington State. You didn't turn it over. You played a little mistake-free. And it looks like things are starting to come around. Demetrius Brown beginning to go up at the job. I think our offense looked better. I think one of the things we overlook is the fact that the big fullback in there helped us a little bit. Uh, having Bunch in there to play this week, uh, I think, really helped us. What's the difference with the big fullback as opposed to a Phil Webb, who's kind of a tailback-fullback combination? Phil's a nifty guy, really a tailback more than a fullback. Whereas Bunch is 230 pounds, and they're lowered in there, and there comes a time when you've got to make them honest in the middle. And the way to do it is with a big fullback uh, grinding some yardage in there. Is it overall pleased, except for the injury problem on the defense? That's it. That's the biggest problem we have right now. And that'll only take time to heal. In the meantime, we've got a look at a new look on the sidelines for Michigan. That's next when Michigan Replay continues.